Just the other day, I put out this video on Pseudo RS, a Rust rewrite of the Pseudo project, most likely being adopted in Ubuntu 25.10, assuming everything goes well, there's still some things to be ironed out. Now, this project isn't just a rewrite for the sake of a rewrite. Todd Miller, the maintainer of Pseudo for the past 30 years, has been involved in this project, is involved in the discussions, and these projects are working collaboratively together. It is not just changing things for the sake of changing things. Now, whenever the discussion of Rust comes up, there is going to be a lot of, let's just say, less than productive discussions. So, there's always people that sort of downplay the importance of memory safety. Now, for the record about memory safety, memory safety is the norm. Languages like C are the exception, but the only reason we talk about things not being memory safe is because C is so popular. And I'm used to this memory safety discussion right now and rehashing the same points. It happens in every single discussion involving Rust. There are some people who would prefer effort be spent on improving the C code, working on better practices to make sure the code is safer. And you know what? I can at least respect that position. I don't think it's the best way to spend your time, but I can understand it. Now, there are some people that frankly just don't like Rust, they don't want to learn Rust, or maybe they've learnt Rust in the past, don't really like it, and would rather stick with something they're more familiar with, they're more comfortable with, and hey, I get it, not every single language is going to be for everyone. There are languages out there I have absolutely zero interest in touching. But the classic C projects are not going anywhere, no one is going to delete the code bases off the internet, and are very likely going to be involved in Linux, probably forever. Like, there's always going to be distros that want to keep using those, and as long as people are dealing with security issues in them, and even right now, besides Ubuntu, we're not really seeing distros move away from sudo. There are some people who think that Rust is some sort of political takeover of Linux, that the furries are going to ruin everything, the furries are invading Linux, and Rust is the way they do so. As a reminder, our logo is a penguin, and I don't know if you've seen the alternative logo that could have been used instead of Tux from Alan McKay in 1996. Um, if you're worried about the furries, I think you lost that battle a very long time ago. But sure, you can have that as your opinion. Now, we can disagree, we can have different opinions, most of us here are adults, and hopefully have the ability to converse with somebody who we don't agree with every single thing they say. Totally fair. Now, the point where I draw a line is where people have absolutely no idea what license is being used in pseudo, and use that as the core foundation of their argument. So I saw a bunch of comments, okay, maybe not a bunch, it was like five comments. Um, yes, I'm making a video angry about like five or six people on that video. A bunch of comments will say, to make myself feel better, talking about this move from sudo to sudo RS being a swap from GPL license code to MIT license code. And the reason why this is bad is when you have something that is permissively licensed like an MIT style license, people don't have to contribute code back, people can go make it proprietary, and that's all bad. Now, a couple of things here, three things. Firstly, this concern is totally valid for something like UUtils. This is MIT and also Apache licensed, and if someone wanted to go and take that project, make it proprietary, they can absolutely do that, the license lets them do so. And as you'd probably guess from the GNU core utils, being from GNU, mostly or entirely, I'm not sure on every single component, GPL v3 or later. So very much copyleft license. Secondly, copyleft licenses don't require you to upstream any code. All they require you to do is release the code to users. So you can go and make some weird fork or something, make a bunch of weird changes, and then just put the code out there. And even if that code would be useful in Upstream, you never have to tell Upstream about it. You never have to give them the code. You don't even have to write it in a way that would fit in the Upstream project. You can just release it. Thirdly, and most importantly here, 
Pseudo isn't copyleft. It's not GPL licensed. It's not GPL1. It's not GPL2. It's not GPL3. It's not GPL3 or later. It's not AGPL. It's not LGPL. It's so much not a GPL licensed project that the project was open sourced before the creation of GPL v1. The project went open source in 1985. GPL v1 didn't come out until 1989. 1985 is the year the GNU manifesto released. So, with all that in mind, what license is being used by Pseudo? If it's not GPL licensed, well, what could it be? What would it be that makes sense to use on a system like Linux? Here we have the Pseudo website. As a reminder, yes, this is their official logo. Yes, it is a sandwich with a face. That's a topic for another video that I think I've already made. Let's go to the pseudo license section. Here we have all of the licenses being used, not just for pseudo itself, but all the various different components of the project, different files that might have different licenses, things of that nature. The main one we care about though is pseudo is distributed under the following license. Copyright these years, Todd C. Miller, permission to use, copy, modify, and distribute this software for any purpose with or without fee is hereby granted, provided the above copyright notice and this permission notice appear in all copies. The software is provided as is, and the author disclaims all warranties with regard to this software, including all implied warranties of merchantability and fitness. In no event shall the author be liable for any special, direct, indirect or consequential damages or any damages whatsoever resulting from loss of use, data or profits, whether in an action of contract, negligence or the tortious action arising of or in connection with the use or performance of this software. Sponsored in part by the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, DARPA, and Air Force Research Laboratory, Air Force Material Command, USAF, under agreement number, this right here. And most of the components use basically the same license. You'll see some slight modifications here and there, like saying don't use the name of the author in some of them. And you will see some different licenses like this one here, which if you know your software licenses, you'd know this is a BSD3 clause. But what about the main license of sudo? This is not BSD3 clause. This is not BSD0. This is not BSD2 clause, but it definitely looks similar to something. You might recognize it as the MIT license, but it's not actually the MIT license. Notice the wording is a little bit different. There's certain paragraphs that are missing. This is not MIT, but it is similar. What this is, is a slightly modified ISC license. This is not a license you see that much nowadays. Most of the use of ISC are older projects before MIT, before BSD became popular. Here is the text of the ISC license, and here is the text of the pseudo license. Basically the same thing. The only real change is the addition of this sponsored part at the bottom, which doesn't really change anything of the license. It really doesn't even need to be part of the license itself. So the ISC license is the Internet Systems Consortium license. And as you can probably tell from the text, with it being very similar to the MIT license and very similar to a lot of the BSD style licenses, this is functionally equivalent to the BSD2 clause and the MIT license. It is OSI approved. It is FSF approved. It is GPL compatible, not it is a GPL style license, but being a permissive license, it can be used with GPL code, and it is absolutely 100% unequivocally not a copyleft license. It is, as I said, a permissive license. Pseudo, for its entire life, has been a permissively licensed project under a license that is basically MIT. So you go from a project which is basically MIT to actually MIT, and why is it a problem 
that Pseudo RS is MIT licensed? I don't know. The answer is for some reason there is this myth. I don't know if it's a myth. I don't know who started it. I don't know where it came from. But this idea that Pseudo is GPL licensed, it's a copyleft project, and it's not, it's never been, it could be, someone could make it that in the future, it is permissively licensed, so that would be a thing you could do, but the project that you use on your distro is not, and has never been, so I hope you learned something, if for some reason you want to support me just getting angry at people in my comment section. Um, <laughs> look, I will know if you're baiting me, so don't even try it. I I can see your intentions, but if someone does say something stupid, I feel like making a video. Be sure to subscribe, and if you like the video, go like the video. If you didn't know what license Suda was using, let me know down below. If you did, let me know how you felt about the comments on that video where people were like, thinking it was GPL licensed. Love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out my Patreon, subscribe, Silly Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and what if I was MIT licensed? Thanks,